Hey ladies and gentlemen, what's up? It's Papa Bail. Welcome to the channel. And I just, this is awesome. Keeps getting better and better every day. This is Pulse Motor. Some more art there. You see the little splatter. Okay, we have a 10 strand coil right here that has two series circuits in it that are the same. Um each both hooked up to that trigger coil so they both hit at exactly the same time with a variance of microseconds which isn't going to matter at all with this thing um, can it get more efficient yes it can be more efficient does it need to be fuck no hell no when you see how fast this thing goes, like right now, you're going to be like, okay, well, maybe we'll just leave it the way it is. All right. So let me down. The two series circuits are 24 gauge, two strands, 26 gauge, two strands, and 30 gauge, one strand. And they're hooked up with the power going into the 30 gauge, through the 26, and out the 24 gauge to the transistor, which is an NTE. 36 MPN fast switching amplifying transistor and then at the same time uh, this coil is identical to this coil and this trigger coil triggers these two transistors which are um, collecting from this drive coil all right, so, but because it is a series circuit, we can put a lot more volts into it and still not spend a lot of power. And you kind of have to put more volts into it for it to be spectacular. But uh, you're only going to draw, I'm only going to draw a total of about an amp here. So this was, this is about 30 watts. And because the, the trigger coils are so far away, uh, it's taken, it took a while for it to get started, but here it goes. And now that it's started, it's going to knock every time. That's powerful. It's still still increasing in speed, but I'm gonna cut it because it's obviously getting a little unstable. I'm gonna work on uh, making a unit with top stabilization because having the shaft just in there it wobbles a lot on the top. But I got my two tungsten. 55% tungsten, 45% copper. I'm going to see if how that works. I'm thinking it's going to be a little flimsy, and I'm going to have to go more pure. But we'll see what's up. Yeah, this is off. This is it when it's off, uh, after you run it. And this will continue to move for about 10 to 15 minutes. And it will continue to move, move, like keep moving, but at an unregisterable speed for about two hours. That's how like good the bearings are and the maglev combined. There's like no, barely any friction ever. And it's only friction because it knocks it knocks. You can hear it knocking every once in a while. The shaft is a little bit like micron small, smaller than the inner diameter of the bearing. See like 
the shaft that I was using before, the one that got bent, this one, was smoother and it fit perfectly. This one's a little smaller, like, like I said, micron smaller. But when it gets going really fast, you get air on all sides and it doesn't touch anything. Um, I mean, that's hypothetically is what I'm saying, because this unfortunately is an unbalanced, it's not very unbalanced, but once you get going around 1,000, 1,200 RPMs, you can really see the imperfections. <clears throat> uh, but it's a work in progress. Uh, I might get my next rotor. Uh, printed with some kind of metal, uh, maybe an aluminum rotor, and we'll see what's up. <clears throat> Should be pretty cool. Lightweight, decent, uh, toughness and the only thing that I'm like I don't the only CAD program that I really have any experience with is Tinkercad and that um, doesn't have a lot of features that I kind of need and but you know I think what I can do because I do have a subscription to Fusion Autodesk uh, would be to create the image in Tinkercad and then manipulate it in the other program because uh, I want to get some threads in there I want to get some uh, countersink holes and I don't have the uh, ability to, to do that as far as I could tell. I mean, I could put together a very small cone on top of a cylinder, and that could make me a countersink hole. But, I mean, that that won't be accurate. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a great idea. You know, if you were in a pinch and then thread thread the cylinder. Wow. Kind of solve my own problem right there. I give that a shot. No, I, because the, the countersink has actually got to be the dimensions of the bottom of a screw head. Um, for it to function, have a functionality that it's supposed to. So you got to get the dimensions of your screw head, and that'll be the dimension of your cone for your countersink hole. <coughs> Yeah, man, I'm excited because this really doesn't cost a lot of power at all. Um, at 25 uh, volts, it's it's 0.7 amps at speed, um, and that's with all four series circuits hooked up. So you got 224s, 226, and 130 strand. In each one of these circuits, and there's four of them. And they each get their own transistor. As you can see, if you turn the voltage up a little bit, the amps they go up a little bit, but not, you know, an exponential value. Alright, yeah, this is 25. Okay.
Wow, and it's like barely touching the dial to turn it off. So I'd say that's a thousand at least. But you can see it's starting to shake there. I'm, I should just have the... Uh, it's not even really about having the balls to do it, quote unquote, but it... Because I've, I've seen it go wrong like more than four times. It's just, I don't know, if that's what you call being cautious, then yeah. I'm lacking the balls to let this thing run to max Q uh, without top stabilization. Anyway, I think this is great. Um, we'll get some, some readings. Uh, on this big coil right here in the next video yeah man that's great all right thank you very much peace out have a good night. Please subscribe. Thank you. And come again. Bye now.